My name is Doug Horn, and I work for the Assassination Records Review Board from August of 1995 through September of 1998. I was hired in 1995 as a senior analyst on the military records team and was promoted halfway through my three-year tour to become the chief analyst for military records. More than one decade after the review board shut down, I published my five-volume book, Inside the Assassination Records Review Board, in November of 2009. In this book, I present my conclusions about the medical cover-up surrounding the JFK assassination, about the alteration of the Zapruder film, and about the reasons why President Kennedy was killed. I want to thank the Future of Freedom Foundation for allowing me to present the basic conclusions of my book in this presentation. The name of my presentation is Altered History. Exposing Deceit and Deception in the JFK Assassination Medical Evidence. Human skull bone, known as the Harper Fragment, was found in Dealey Plaza on Saturday, November 23, 1963. It was photographed and examined by three Dallas area pathologists, which we'll discuss some more on the next slide. Now, I want you to examine these two images. Uh, everything was done properly in these two photographs. They're in good focus. The bone fragment is photographed next to a ruler. So you can see the uh, ruler is in inches on, on this, in this scale. And the image on the left is the exterior surface, the outside surface of the Harper fragment. The image on the right is the interior surface. And you know it's the interior surface because you can see the markings made by several blood vessels in the bone. These photographs were made by Dallas physicians and hospital staff. That's why they were done properly. And uh, you can see them today in the National Archives in color by special appointment. Let's discuss the significance of these fragments. Now the examination of the Harper fragment by three Dallas area pathologists the very weekend after the assassination revealed that it was occipital bone from the rear of the skull. Let's talk about this. This, first of all, corroborates the observations of all other witnesses who saw an apparent blowout in the rear of JFK's head. This fragment was delivered to Rear Admiral Berkeley, JFK's military physician, by the FBI. He signed a receipt for it, and that receipt exists today, as well as signing for one other skull fragment found in Dealey Plaza, so-called Burroughs fragment. Both of those fragments are missing today. The last person to sign for them was Rear Admiral Berkeley. For this reason, Admiral Berkeley, who was also present during the autopsy, is the prime suspect, I think, for what happened to the three missing skull fragments that were x-rayed. I spoke earlier about the three fragments x-rayed during the autopsy, the three fragments brought to the morgue late during the autopsy by the Secret Service. Those have also disappeared. Dr. Berkeley would appear to be the prime suspect for disposing of those as well. Now the independent finding that the Harper fragment was occipital bone was arrived at by pathologists Jack Harper, Gerard Noteboom and Dr. A.B. Cairns, the head of pathology at Methodist Hospital. They arrived at this conclusion, recorded in two different FBI interviews by close personal examination of the fragment itself before there was any official explanation for the assassination. I, I can't emphasize how important this is. Uh, these men were guided by no prejudice, by no official findings, uh, for that matter, by no eyewitness testimony of what anyone had seen. They simply received an item of physical evidence on Saturday, the day after the assassination. They examined it. They determined that it was human bone, human skull bone. They determined that it was fresh, that the blood markings on it were very fresh, and uh, came to a unanimous conclusion that it was occipital bone. Later, in the 1970s, the House Select Committee on Assassinations interviewed Dr. Cairns, who is the chief of pathology at this hospital and was the chief 
of this team of three people that examined the bone the day after the assassination. He was the senior member present. They interviewed Dr. Cairns, and Dr. Cairns told the HSCA staff in the, in the late 1970s that the bone was definitely occipital, and he knew that from examining the tables of the skull and the uh, blood vessel markings on the interior side of the fragment. That staff interview, along with all HSCA staff interviews of all autopsy witnesses, were buried for 50 years. And only because of the JFK Records Act do we have those reports to read today. This report is one of them, with Dr. Cairns. So thanks to Oliver Stone's movie, JFK, we have the JFK Records Act, and thanks to the JFK Records Act, we now have the House Select Committee on Assassinations staff interview reports of multiple medical witnesses who all describe things very much at variance with the autopsy report, as we'll see. Now this finding by those three pathologists on November 23, 1963, that the Harper fragment was definitely occipital bone is extremely important. It corroborates the observations of all of the Parkland Hospital treatment staff and of Secret Service agent Clint Hill that President Kennedy had a wound in the rear of his skull, a wound in the right rear of his head, not in the top of his head and not in the right side of his head. During its deliberations, the House Select Committee on Assassinations established a forensic pathology panel. Uh, the consensus, after considerable argument and disagreement by the forensic pathology panel, was that the Harper fragment was parietal bone from the top of the head. This is by the forensic pathology panel of the HSCA in the late 1970s. The problem, ladies and gentlemen, is that they did not have the bone in their hands. They could not examine the bone with their eyes. Dr. Cairns and Dr. Noteboom and Dr. Harper did have the bone in their hands and could examine it with their eyes. And I believe they made the definitive judgment on what type of bone it was and from whence it came in the president's skull. The House Select Committee Forensic Pathology Panel exhibited a severe bias which I believe led to serious flaws in all of their findings. They bet the farm on the authenticity of the autopsy photographs and the autopsy x-rays. They made a judgment that all of the autopsy photographs were accurate and to be trusted and that the surviving skull x-rays, the three surviving skull x-rays were accurate and to be trusted. As my presentation shows, Neither the autopsy photographs nor the skull x-rays are accurate or to be trusted for various reasons. We'll go into those details momentarily. This was the serious weakness in the methodology employed by the HSCA Forensic Pathology Panel, in my view. They assumed that all the autopsy photos and x-rays, especially the skull x-rays, were authentic, accurate, and to be trusted, and forced their conclusions about everything else to fit into that paradigm. My presentation reveals that there are significant problems with almost all the autopsy photographs and with all three skull x-rays. Therefore, I believe the HSCA forensic pathology panel's conclusions are largely incorrect.